Okay guys, I have another quick video. Um, I wanted to show you this uh, piece of software uh, from ST at their website. It's called STM Studio. Um, now it's not a, a development environment. That's what it sounds like. But it's a nifty little thing where you can see your uh, your variables as they change graphically. Um, for example, okay, so you're gonna go, you're gonna download it. Okay, just go to the website, look for STM Studio. You download it, you install it, uh, and then I'm gonna show you how to use it. So I made a this little. Uh, this is from a previous uh, tutorial I was doing, but here's the thing. Uh, to view your variables, you can only view variables that are global. So in this case, I have this variable x. It's declared outside of my main. So integer x equals zero. It's declared outside of my main. It's uh. And all it's gonna do is gonna increment x. It's gonna have a little delay, which is just a for loop. Uh, and when x reaches the value of 20, it's gonna go back to zero and then just keep incrementing. So that's all that is from zero to 20, back and back down zero to 20, zero to 20. So that's all x is gonna do. You're gonna compile it. You're gonna upload it to your board, um, and then you're gonna open up the software, STM Studio. okay so here it is this is what it looks like and you're going to go to import variables file import variables at which point you're gonna navigate to as you can see right here wherever your project is that's where you're going to uh, navigate to and then you're gonna find the executable file so in my case it's on my OneDrive There we go, STM stuff, videos. And once you get to the file where, to the folder where your project is, it's gonna be under objects. And you'll see it right there. It's basically either an ELF file, an .out or AXF file. Uh, so you'll select it. And once you select it, it'll load all the variables that it can read. And again, it has to be global variables. It can't read variables inside your other um, your other uh, functions or anything like that. So in this case, the only variable it was able to see was that global variable of x. So you're gonna highlight it, and then you're gonna click import, and then it's gonna pop up over here. As you see, you can close this window. Now on this variable, you can right click, you can highlight it, right click, send to var viewer one. So it's going to send the variable to this viewer window. Uh, and then you can press play and you'll see your variable as it, uh, as you can see, it's going up to 20. I think I can zoom into this thing. Yeah, so it's incrementing all the way. And once it gets to, here's 20, to 20, it goes down. You can view it here as uh, this is a quote unquote curve. You can view it as a table. Here's the table of my variable. And this is the address where it's at. <clears throat> uh, I think. Anyways, so here's the value of the variable as it's changing. You can view it as a bar graph. See, it's going from 0 to 20 and then back down, which is basically uh, what it's doing in, 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 my, uh, in my code. Now I'm not sure what point viewer is. Again, I haven't used I haven't used this uh, software much, so I'm just playing with it myself. And let's make this 25. There you go. That looks cool. Curve. Hexadecimal. What does that do? Oh, it just shows me the values in hex. Um. Hmm, what will that do? Oh no. Hmm. But yeah, it's a nifty little thing and you can uh, actually see uh, what your variables are doing. Now I would imagine this uh, might be interesting if you're doing some sort of uh, PID tuning or something like that. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So yeah, you can play with this if you'd like. I just thought it was neat, so I'd show it to you guys and there you have it.